Now, what I'm going to talk about now, I absolutely loathe talking about because it's talking about me. And I don't like talking about me. I like talking about other people. I like talking about Democrats doing stupid stuff. But I have to talk about me because in probably the next week and a half or so, I am going to have to go back to Detox Mansion. Um, for those of you who don't know or are fairly new to the afterwebs or the universe or anything about the radio show, back in 2012, July, I had a tonsil pulled out because it was swelling up on me and didn't feel too hot. And so I thought I was going to have a tonsillectomy. When I woke up, they told me it was cancerous. And I was going to go down a very long road of discomfort, which included radiation, possibly more cutting of my soft palate, and I would probably lose my saliva glands and my taste buds and my hair, and I'd pre pretty much not be doing too cool for a while. Went to Germany, got treated, everything seemed to be fine. And about a year later, I got re-diagnosed because the form of cancer that I had is called squamous cell carcinoma, but it's called a metastatic squamous cell carcinoma. Now, see, that's different. The key word there meaning metastatic. Metastatic means it likes to move. And it moved from my tonsil down to a lymph node down in my neck. And actually, when I had a PET CT scan back in 2013, when the lymph node had blowed up on me, there was a spot in my chest, not attached to an organ, just kind of floating around, not, not floating, but just kind of stuck somewhere kind of behind, behind a lung in kind of a fat tissue kind of outside my heart, just kind of hanging there. They said it wasn't a huge deal yet, but it was just kind of there, and it was probably a, an issue that you're going to have to deal with down the road. At that point, when it becomes metastatic, Western medicine pretty much throws up their hands. Now, that doesn't mean they weren't going to try and do a whole neck dissection thing on me and carve me up like a Christmas turkey and make sure that I lost part of my jawline and two inches of my neck and scoop out, scooping out lymph nodes and everything else, but... That's what they were going to try and do to me. Went back to Germany and got zapped again. And I got, I would say, a good couple years on it. Until about a month and a half, two, three months ago. When I felt something starting to pop back up about the same spot where my neck was. See, the thing about squamous cell is it likes to flare back up in the same place, but then it also likes to move. It's kind of weird how it does things. So it kind of decided it wanted to pop up again. So I'm thinking, okay, here we go again. I've, I've seen this dance before. So I went and got a PET CT scan. And naturally, it showed that it was a problem. It, uh, it was glowing like a, it was like, it was, it was glowing like a Christmas light on a tree. And the spot in my chest was not glowing quite so much. Actually, it wasn't glowing very much at all. Same thing, very slow growing, but there's a spot that's called behind my right helum, which is like the right lobe of your lung in what's the pericardial fat tissue kind of like in your chest cavity. So it's just kind of like a little pocket of fat that's got a little, a nitty bitty thing about like that. Very slow growing, very low intensity. The one in my neck wants to go kablooey more. Hasn't gone anywhere else, but those two spots. Now, Naturally, everybody around has freaked the hell out, including me, for a while. Um, the, the boss has just gotten back from his trip to fishing, and there was an oncologist friend of Jan Janura up there who is a retired oncologist now, so he's got no more skin in the game, but he spent... 35 years of his life, 40 years as a pretty top oncologist out of Seattle. And Hugh says, just humor me. Before, he, before I go on this Alaska trip, at least call him and talk to him and see if 
you know, because he wants me to go get the, the conventional medicine, com- the traditional stuff. Chemo, radiation, before I quit screwing around with this anymore. So I emailed the doc. My wife emailed the doc. He emailed us back. And that brings us to last Thursday. Last Thursday morning, doc calls back, calls my wife's cell phone. Now he calls me at, I don't know what time in the morning it was. It was early enough. It was like, oh, dark 30 to me. It was probably 830, but I usually sleep in because I'm up late working. So imagine starting your day on a Thursday, right? Imagine starting your day, waking up out of a dead sleep and have your wife come in and turn on the speakerphone and you're now got to shake the cobwebs off and have the, the conversation with the real doc, right? Who knows my case now, gave him, you know, sh- shared all the records with him, what the PET CT scan said, what the history was, what we've done, all this kind of stuff. And what does he tell me? Basically, he wouldn't recommend, because I, I asked him, I said, the, the, the bottom line is, what would you do if this were you? What, what's, what, what's, what would you do Western medicine wise? Here's, you know, here's what I'm dealing with. What do you do? And he says, I wouldn't do anything Western medicine because there's nothing Western medicine can do. He said, have you thought about what happens on the other side? And he starts having that conversation with me. So that's an interesting way to start your day. Wake up and basically be told you're terminal. The reason why is because once it's metastatic and it moves, he says, there is zero evidence in any Western medicine book that says you survive this using their terms. And so if you can't, if, if the radiation, chemo, cutting, whatever else they do, it's still going to flare back up according to their stats. Why put you through all the hassle? And all the sickness and all the nasty side effects and do all that when you're going to be miserable and it's going to come back anyway. And when it comes back, all the stuff doesn't work the second time because your body and the cancer mutates and develops a a resistance to it and it doesn't work the second time and you're basically done. So why do that to yourself? Basically, you are now on your bell lap and start making your bucket list is what he told us. So, the fortunate thing is, I'm not dead yet. I am going to Germany again, and I've already talked to them. They know what we're dealing with. They agreed with what Western medicine would throw up their hands at this point. And the bottom line is, this has always been metastatic. It was metastatic from day one. When they pulled the tonsil out, What they were going to do, what they wanted to do was to do the radiation, everything else up here in my jaw when it was down here too. And they wouldn't have hit it up there. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have hit down here. They would have only hit up here and it still would have come back when the, when the node flared up here in my neck in 2013, it flared up in a hurry because of a doc palpating my throat and mashing a lymph node and it kind of swelled up and it became cancerous. Well, when it swelled up, there were cancer cells already there. They just hadn't, you know, gone to town yet, but they were already still there. When I had the PET CT scan in 2013, the spot in my chest was already there. It had already moved. So they could have done the radiation on me. They could have done all that stuff in 2012. They wouldn't have gotten it all, and I'd still be in the same boat. Actually, I probably would be in a much worse position now than if I had gone over and gotten it treated. So they're going to go over there, and they're going to, here's the thing that's different this time, and this is what's going to drive people absolutely bonkers. So do you go in and you cut this out? And do you try and then schedule a second surgery to go into your chest and try and fish the thing out in your chest? Or do you treat it and try and kill the tumor and do it using the the methods we're doing here? If I were to go in and do the surgery, here's the one thing the body is really good at doing. 
as soon as you have a knife and you cut the body open, the body doesn't like that much. And it says, this is not normal. We need to heal from this. So what your body starts producing immediately is growth hormones because that helps the recovery of the surgery quicker. And you can't counter that. That's just a natural reaction. Anytime you do surgery on the body, it creates a, a growth hormone situation, which cancer cells really, really like. So the theory is, if I cut what I have out, if there's cancer cells anywhere else that just haven't quite turned into a tumor yet, you've just begged, pleaded, and done everything you can to encourage them to start growing elsewhere, which we don't want to do. The hyperthermia and other modalities that they do over in Germany, in theory, worked before. There's no reason they, work, they won't work again now. Now, when I mean work, here's what I mean by work. If it's metastatic, it's a nasty little bug, and it doesn't like to go away. It likes to flare back up. But I've got three possible outcomes here, okay? Outcome number one, they go in there and they hit me with everything they got, and the cancer says, okay, I've had enough of this crap, and it rolls over and dies. And they kill the tumor here, they kill the tumor here, and I'm fine. I'd be perfectly fine with that result. That may or may not happen. Door number two is they buy me some time. Now, this may not be the most economical way of doing things, but I'm still alive. So door number two is they hit me with everything they got and they get the tumor to go down or shrink or get to the point where it's imperceptible and they treat it like a weed or ivy and they whack it back. And it may mean every few years I've got to go get in their test, figure out where it's gone, go over and get whacked again, and then do the same thing a couple years down the road. And who knows how long I've got left. Door number three is I go over there. They hit every, everything they can with it, and it doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, I'm in my bell lap. And what that means is, I don't know how much time I have left. It's a slow-growing tumor, and it's technically not attached to an organ. Now, does that mean I won't get another tumor somewhere else? I sure as hell hope not, but I don't know. I said from day one, if any of you recall, I said from day one that I beat it once, I beat it back twice. There's no guarantees. God's, God's got a role in this that I don't have, meaning I have no idea. Maybe I will kick it from cancer someday. I don't know when that day is, and I don't know what it may be from. I may beat this. It's entirely up to him how this, how this plays out. And if it's door number three and this was meant to be how I was supposed to go out, then I will go out as gracefully as I can. I will stretch it as long as I can. I will continue as long as I can. And then you suckers get to deal with Hillary because it's not my fault. But in the meantime, I'm not symptomatic. I'm fine. I'm going to go as long as I can. I'm going to go over and beat the hell out of it in Germany. And worst case scenario, I beat it back for a while and I buy myself some time and then we'll see where we go from there. But I'm not giving up. But for those of you who think that, man, you should, you should have gotten, if you would have just done the right treatment to begin with, I've, I know my body real well and I know a, a lot about this stuff. If they would have done what they said they were going to do initially, I don't think I'd still be here. I really don't. Certainly not in this capacity. I certainly wouldn't be able to do after shows. I certainly wouldn't be able to do It's a Small World all day long. I certainly wouldn't be able to do a lot of the stuff I've been able to. I certainly wouldn't be able to go do a, an Alaska cruise. There's a lot of stuff I wouldn't have been able to do that I have been. 
doing it the way I've been doing it. So I have no regrets. I'm not giving up. I'm not rolling over. But I'm realistic enough to know that it's up to God how he's going to do this. I will fight it every way I know how to fight it, as intelligently as I can fight it. But in the meantime, who knows? Now, for those of you who were at Tribble Fest, who are now saying, wait a minute, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you say anything? Yeah, I knew. I, it was, I knew what was going on. I could have very easily dropped that bomb during one of the dinners at Tribble Fest. Do you honestly think for a minute I wanted to cast that Paul over, over a dinner? I didn't, and I wasn't going to. I'm not going to hide it. I wasn't really hiding it then. Some people knew that really needed to know. People knew, knew. But I was trying to wait for the time when it wouldn't completely destroy everybody. And I figured, okay, I got to at least let you know because I'm going to be gone for a while in August because I got to go. I got to try. That's, that's what I got to do. So if... You see a bunch of black screen for a while in August. I will check in when I can. I will do what I can. I fully expect to be back to normal by the time I get back here. And we'll see where we go once we know how the treatments are going. But I'm going to have to kind of prioritize for the next month until I figure out kind of what I'm dealing with and what I've got my arms around. And I will keep it posted as much as I can, I will resurrect the old, I remember what the site was, Caring Bridge site. I'll resurrect that when I get going and I'll start journaling it again. And who knows, maybe this is another chapter in the book. And we'll see once and for all if this stuff can actually shrink and get rid of tumors. We think it can. They're pretty confident over there. They can, they can if nothing else, they can whittle it back and buy me, buy me a few years at a time. We'll see. Time will tell. In the meantime...